So there's three ways to change a UPC code. And I think the easiest one is to simply file a brand registry ticket and take a picture of, your, uh, of the products or a website manufacturer link. With the UPC code change, the best way in my opinion to get this to change is a brand registry ticket. So let me show you how to do that. Go to brandservices.amazon.com, just type that into the URL, hit sign in, Which US. One? Okay. okay, we're gonna hit support, brand support, uh, contact brand, the, the middle one, sorry. And in here, we wanna do listing issue and request a product detail page change. You have your ASIN already copied in your browser, so you should just be able to hit control V in there or right click paste, whatever is easiest for you, continue. And from the drop down, there should be a UPC section. We're gonna go with other since it's not, and hit next. Okay, and in here, I want you to type, please update the UPC and paste your new UPC you want it changed to. You're gonna type in the UPC. You need to put in some explanation here. They'll give you a little pushback if you don't. And just, and, and, and all I want you to simply write is something along the lines of, um, I'm the manufacturer of this item, Somebody, some other distributor launched this item without my permission and, and loaded the false UPC, okay? Mm -hmm. And then manufacturer's website, but you are considered the manufacturer, by the way. All right, and then what I recommend you do is have mm -hmm. your web guy simply add the new mm -hmm. UPC somewhere mm -hmm. on this page. Doesn't matter where, somewhere. Mm -hmm. And this step that I just mentioned is not 100% critical, but it's very helpful. The reason you're gonna do that is to give cadence to or or merit rather to the request and mm -hmm. and basically you're going to have some dude in india he's going to look mm -hmm. at the request and and he's got a he's got a checkbox of things he's like does this mm -hmm. does this look like a real change Does this look good okay they gave me a website it's got the it's got the url with the uh, upc there okay mm -hmm. i'm going to go ahead and accept it that's what that's why we're doing that if you get pushback mm -hmm. i recommend that you hit reply to the case and mm -hmm. call in and ask mm -hmm. them to talk to the catalog team to make the change for you on the phone. I just showed you the easiest technique. This is, in my opinion, the best one. The next step is more technical. And instead of showing you on the coaching call, I'm gonna simply just forward you my guide. Okay. And, and this is a new guide, so it's subject to change, but you can do template upload and test this out as well. So step one, add them all to your account. Mm -hmm. So I'll even write it out here. So add to account. Step two, try and make a change. Okay, and you could do this manually, not as effective, or you could do this by template. So manually or template. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is gonna be the better of the two. Um, and all you have to do for the, for the template upload is download your backup after you add the ASIN, make all the changes. Mm -hmm and then do a re-upload. And when you re-upload it, some of the changes will take mm -hmm. and some will not, okay? For the ones that don't, you go to step three and you're gonna do brand registry tickets, mm -hmm. just like we just did. So okay. you're gonna come back to the listing issue section and you're gonna do these tickets, okay? And, and you'll notice that you can only change one attribute at time and on the ticket, so you're gonna file one ticket for the title, one for the bullets, one for the photos. Trust me, it's the better way to do it. Don't ask for multiple things. The reason is the people that, that do these tickets, they're, they're judged on their activity levels. So having less on a ticket means you have more likelihood of getting it actually changed. Okay, all right. Uh, and manufacturer URL or product picture will work on all of those as well. Your current manufacturer page or your current photos without the new UPC, if you're not doing a UPC change, could just be as is. You probably don't need to make any changes to that. But to be clear, when mm -hmm. we talk about product images, mm -hmm. we're talking a cell phone shot. Don't yes. give them the graphically edited one that's already public on the page. Grab the mm -hmm. cell phone, take a picture. And, and here's the key. Do you see how you can see my entire cell phone in my, my video image? Do you see how it's not cut off? If you take a picture like this, do you see how it's cut off now? They won't count that. Okay. So you need to show everything within the shot. All right, brand registry tickets, okay? 
I bet you that almost all of those will go through with limited pushback. Step four will be to call on the tickets that you already made. And, and on the call, you're going to be like, I need to talk to the catalog team. I'm the brand owner. I have proof. I need to make the following changes. They'll say, why don't you make the change in your own account? To which you'll say, I did. I've already done a template upload. Here is my batch ID. And I tried manually doing it. It won't take. It's stuck. Some other distributor already loaded the product. Please make my seller contribution. The keyword there is seller contribution. The main hold. Reflect on the detail page. So make my seller contribution reflect on the detail page. Those are the keywords you need to say or put in tickets when you're doing follow-ups. So, so let's say you, you follow one, file one of these brand registry tickets and they mm -hmm. push back and they're like, we need more information. Mm -hmm. to which you, or, or, hey, to make this change, do X, Y, Z. To which you'll say, already did all that. Here's the batch mm -hmm. ID. Please mm -hmm. make my seller contribution reflect on the detail page. I believe that this will resolve all of your problems. Um, mm -hmm. Brand registry mm -hmm. is key, mm -hmm. not seller central. So to be clear though, uh, mm -hmm. the, the template tickets mm -hmm. are, or the, the template upload is in seller central, mm -hmm. but the brand registry tickets is at brandregistry.amazon.com. After you do all that and you do transparency, the next thing you could do, I'm gonna clear my screen here, is do uh, report intellectual IP violations. So do you wanna go ahead and click that? And in here, mm -hmm. uh, all right, click, click on that. Let's, let's see what that brings us to. So type the ASIN in, you, you still have it copied, I believe, and hit search. See how we can show all the offers, click that. So, so in here, you can you can select so let's let's just go through the motions we're not going to actually file a report but just go through the motions yeah. let's just select two of these dudes you can pick whatever you want top right click on select issue and we're going to go trademark infringement and in yeah. here you're, you're you can i i honestly don't know which one works best i try both usually you can go counterfeit if you select the counterfeit one they will ask if you've made a purchase so that you know, 80, 80 bucks a pop and six sellers that can add up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're really, really want to knock it out, that's the way to go. Select them as counterfeit. And then you give them the order IDs on the ticket. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you can do returns on these as a sure. customer. You can even give them bad reviews or say, stop selling mm -hmm. counterfeit bull crap. But, but keep in mind the following, mm -hmm. there are some legal implications with these actions. Technically, Amazon is a marketplace. And as a marketplace, if they are legitimately selling your product and they're just buying it through a distributor, that's technically legal. So if you do this, you could get pushback from the seller. Now, most of the sellers are just going to go away, which is mm -hmm. why this strategy works. For the one that is, I don't know, a multi million distributor and you file this and it gets their account suspended. You will risk legal proceedings. Just be careful. You can always, you know, write Amazon and release your infringement claim, but that doesn't mean you haven't done damage. Mm -hmm. So, so use this after you try transparency, or if you do get an unauthorized seller who is legitimately selling a counterfeit, absolutely use this. The other option is a little less formal. You're just saying, Hey, I don't, I don't authorize these guys to sell. Mm -hmm. um, you can try that out. So what I would do is send them all a letter and say, hey, I'm going to be contacting Amazon on X date. Make it like seven days away. If you don't remove your listing from Amazon, just so you know, per mm -hmm. our own distribution agreement, you agreed not to sell on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be reporting all sellers. So if you, if you sell to some other mom and pop, I recommend you tell them too, because I'm reporting everybody per our distribution agreements and, and give, them, give them a formal notice. Here's another tip. And then I got a hard stop here. Um, go back to the live. Actually, let me just, I'll just demo this on my side. It'll be quicker. Okay. So back on my screen here, you see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you see how you can see the new and used on the, on the mid right over here? Yeah. So in here, um, you can click on right. the, you can click on yeah. the seller name yeah. and on here, you have their contact info, which you can yeah. cross check against your distribution agreements yeah. Yeah. and you can ask a question. Mm -hmm. This will take you through the customer portal, mm -hmm. item for sale, 
mm -hmm. other, write the ASIN in, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever the ASIN is mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is going to go straight to the seller. Hi, I'm the manufacturer of ASIN whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a, an official cease and desist to stop selling my product on Amazon. Per mm -hmm. all of our distribution agreements, I'm the only one authorized to sell on Amazon. You mm -hmm. have until X date to remove this listing, mm -hmm. following which I'm reporting it to Amazon. This is your warning. Do that for every seller. 